The greatest fear that I have regarding um, the outcome uh, for America of these disclosures is that nothing will change. Edward Snowden, the NSA leaker, worked for Booz Allen Hamilton, a consulting firm that helps with a lot of government intelligence. A couple years ago, a post-examination found more than 1,900 private companies work on programs related to counterterrorism. One government estimate suggested 70% of intelligence spending goes to contractors. So what does that mean for the security of America's secrets? Post-investigative reporter Bob O'Hara has been considering that question. Good to see you, Bob. Thanks for having me again. So I know we don't have an exact answer to this, but I'm curious on your thoughts about it. How does this slideshow that he was able to share with us get off the computers and into his hands? Like, I can't imagine he could just email it to a Gmail account. Is that possible? Well, the answer is uh, we don't know and may never know uh, the exact mechanics of it because of the classified nature and the sensitivity of the documents. Uh, but there are some scenarios that we can contemplate. Uh, first, it bears uh, noting that the security industrial complex, the partnerships between the NSA, private contractors, the intelligence community and companies has grown um, dramatically since 9-11. Uh, there are tens of thousands of private contractors uh, who were hired to do intelligence. Many of them are sitting side by side with government workers, and they have access, once they're on the inside, to an amazing array of very sensitive uh, documents and secrets. Um, there are lots of ways you can take those. You can download them, as Bradley Manning did, onto CDs. You could use flash drives. Um, unless there are systems in place, and undoubtedly are, there are in some cases, uh, that track every download of every document and then there's somebody to look at those audit logs or to analyze them, um, it, it seems likely that it would be relatively easy to steal information, to print it out, secret it out, and it has to do with the numbers. If there are thousands more people, who's going to watch them all? What do we know about Snowden? Um, him personally, but I'm also interested in what exactly his job was and how many people like him are out there. The, the portrait uh, if you will, is, uh, is just coming into focus now. Uh, we know that uh, he dropped out of high school for a time. We know he spent a short stint in the military. Um, he worked at the CIA for several years, not long, um, and then became a contractor. And it appears that he's worked at uh, at least two companies. Uh, he worked at Booz Allen for about three months, according to the company. Um, and the exact nature of his job is not clear yet, but it looks like he was uh, a, uh, a cleared, security cleared technology worker and or consultant. Um, now, that could go one of two ways. He could just be a, a low level guy with a clearance or he could be uh, someone who is fundamentally important to a key part of our national security world which are the computers and networks. We, we've talked about how there may be too many people with access to this information. Another thing that's been discussed is that there's maybe too many top secret documents. When you stamp top secret on every darn thing, it makes it hard to protect the truly important uh, information. Um, I would argue as an investigative reporter, I've been tracking this for many years, uh, it's out of balance. There is way too much secrecy. Uh, there are documents that are um, routinely stamped FOUO for official use only that are given to the Hill, for example, and people are afraid to share them, even though there's nothing, you know, that's nothing uh, relating to national security. They're afraid to share them because they're afraid that Department of Homeland Security or some other agency is going to come after them and prosecute them. It's really created a uh, congestion in the debate and the discussion about a whole array of issues from contracting fraud to uh, the proper balance uh, between surveillance and liberty. Okay. Uh, what's the next question you want answered in all this? Uh, I'm really interested in uh, how much we're going to have an earnest debate on surveillance, and I'm really interested in how the government responds to the security breach that is uh, grave. And um, both of them are totally legitimate questions. Both are very, very difficult. And there's a chance that both will be, uh, the debates on both will not be as robust as they ought to be. I hope that's not the case. Okay, Bob, always good to see you. Thank you very much.